now it's time for our roundtable discussion. It is time for group chat. Um, this is where we talk about the big topic of the week, and this is big, big. This is like real heady stuff, guys. We're getting real weird here, real deep. When do we not get weird? Um, yeah, have you been to our office? Yeah, I mean, well, usually we get real weird off camera uh, and off the air, and we're going to get a little weird and uh, on camera Good. and on microphone now. Exactly what we've always wanted. Uh, so if you have been reading the site this week, you may have noticed that we are doing a week-long celebration of artificial intelligence. This is in Gadget's AI week, um, and we've been covering it from all sorts of different angles. And I think one, one, of, the, one of my favorite pieces that has gone up this week, and I love them all, to be clear, um, is a piece from Jess Condit about whether or not, you know, this idea, we even understand what artificial intelligence is because we don't necessarily know what intelligence is. Um, and so I kind of wanted to take this, like, step back and look at this from, like, a really, like, big picture perspective. You know, and I guess let's start with that, like, first fundamental question, Sherlyn. I mean, do we understand intelligence enough to create an artificial version of it? No, we don't. I don't understand intelligence. I'm not even intelligent enough to <laughs> understand your question, really. I mean, sometimes I code, sometimes... I mean, the human mind is kind of limited. It's very, like, it, these big conversations, chicken or the egg, like, so many things, there's a there God, these things are similar to the question you're asking me, basically, do we understand intelligence? Do I understand intelligence? I don't. It's, it's beyond the... God, Siri. Speaking um, of not intelligent. <laughs> right? Hey, Siri. Siri really wants to take part she in this really conversation. Wants to be, beyond the biology of how a brain works, I don't think we understand how, how to program intelligence, how to create intelligence. I think we know how to program it. I don't think we understand what it means to be a sentient being. human being. Yeah. Um, cause you can, it's kind of like a game of whack-a-mole, right? You can think of all sorts of algorithms and if this then equations yeah. that can make a computer smarter and make better decisions, but all of that relies on input. And it is a game of whack-a-mole because you can think of one, but there's still an infinite number of unaccounted for possibilities. possibilities. Yeah. But do we need to even understand the mind? Like, do we actually need to <laughs> fundamentally understand what intelligence is and how the human mind works to create an artificial version of it? Or is, there, or is it like you're saying, is it just something that we can eventually get through through whack-a-mole algorithms and like just like not even truly reverse engineering, just kind of like band-aid upon band-aid? I think we need to live with the fact that we're not going to build something that's completely intelligent. That's what we need to. Well, it all circles back to what your definition of, it, of intelligence is. And the thing is, there are, an, there are as many definitions of intelligence as there are people to offer opinions on what that definition is, right? Like, we, we're not going to come to a consensus as to what it is. Whether or not that informs how we approach AI construction is another story. But I think data brings up an interesting point. Like, uh, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a, I'm, getting, I'm getting kind of fired up here. Um, I think it's a little anthropocentric. I think it's a little silly to just assume that the only way to build an AI is to understand how our brain works because we're working, when it comes to intelligences that can understand and interpret like abstract information, we have, we have a sample size of one, it's us. Mm -hmm. And like, sure, that's great. And like, we can build off of that. But is it, it feels presumptuous to think that that's the only way to do it. And, and that, like, there's no, I, I don't know, like, so you, you think we're using the wrong I'm, I'm, bench, no, we're, we're using the wrong benchmark, perhaps even to begin with, because we have just that one, or the wrong species, <laughs> or the wrong like sure we, we might be better off building AIs based off of like whale thought, uh, or not. But well, I mean, that, that, I mean, I think that's an interesting question. Is you know, do we have to fundamentally rethink our definition, whatever our definition of is intelligence, or something that we'll hopefully get to in a little bit, uh, or like creativity, because our sole understanding of it is human intelligence and human creativity and human consciousness and do we have to like just create a separate definition for machines like is there a different understanding for machine created uh works or i think that is i think it's fair to say that's the case i think some AI researchers already hold sort of a different definition of intelligence um i don't know that we'll ever be able to create something that sort of feels and acts and emotes humanly mm -hmm. because i think there is I, I couldn't speak to like the biological mechanisms, but there's like stuff inside us that doesn't. It really won't emote because it won't have feelings. Yeah. Sure, but uh, I mean, one could argue that that's that feelings are like a cascade of like brain chemicals, and once we understand how those function, we could theoretically figure out how to replicate that. Well, 
And this is getting really deep. Yeah. We're That's weird. the point of this yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Would we have feelings without a sense of self and individuality? Self-awareness? No. And is that something that you can replicate on a machine? I don't know. I think, I think what is eventually going to happen is scientists will continue on their path of trying to replicate the human brain in silicon and in code. But we'll also see people just sort of like trying to piece stuff together and in search of like hitting that tipping point where all of these connected systems sort of transcend the system and become this sort of cohesive whole, this, this sentient. Is that dangerous though? Who knows? I mean, I don't think any of us are qualified to say it, but it's, it's interesting and it's something we're going to do anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, the, the danger question is probably uh, barely worth considering yeah. at this point. Oh, thanks. Um, well, no, no, it's not like it's, <laughs> I think it's, I, I think, you know, Elon Musk and all these people who are like really sounding the alarm yeah. um, are, cle- are clearly super concerned about how machines are going to enslave us and turn us into like house cats <laughs> or something. Um, but I mean, I think Jess makes this really important point in her piece, and I think uh, others have uh, made a similar argument, which is, you know, not only do we not understand intelligence, we don't understand artificial intelligence, and it's probably too early to really be passing judgment and being getting super concerned about, you know, becoming slaves to the machine, uh, quite literally. Um, I did, I think you kind of touched on something interesting, though, there, Chris, which is this um, idea of worrying less about build, mimicking the brain and trying to recreate this, and there will be people who do that, and more about kind of building this patchwork of things that um, you know, gets past the system, as you put it. And I think you know, at the end of the day, it's maybe I'm misinterpreting what you're saying. It's more about, at that point, mimicry and like achieving the end goal of appearing like conscious, mm-hmm. if not actually being it. And you know, uh, one of our other editors, uh, Aaron, did this great piece in November uh, where he tried to teach a neural network to write an Engadget story. And then he did a similar experiment this week for AI Week in which he fed a uh, whole bunch of Engadget stories to another system called Wordsmith, which is what uh, the Associated Press and a couple of others used to do, generate like sports stories mm-hmm. and finance stories and stuff like that. Um, and while the neural network is arguably the more advanced system. It kind of tries to mimic the way the human brain works and make all these connections. And it did spit out like what would qualify as English sentences. <laughs> um, it could not write a news story. It didn't know how to like piece together all of these. It was not a post things. we were proud to have on a <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, we, we, to be clear, ran excerpts of it in line in yeah. the story for We did a post reason. it on the site, but with a d- disclaimer, I believe. Oh, no, no, uh, I'm talking about the one the from older. November. Sorry, oh, okay. the, the one we, we ran, the, the one from this week was written less, it wasn't written by a neural network. It was uh, almost like a programming language, basically, where... Mm-hmm. Aaron fed it a bunch of like conditional rules and like tables of data, and then it wrote this post about the Note Seven, which we did publish, and uh, I will make sure that that ends up in the description, and you can read it and read Aaron's piece. Which but is even excellent. that, we weren't terribly. It wasn't a messy post, but it also wasn't a very smart one. No, no it's yeah. very like Engadget 1.0. Like, right. hey, here's here is the thing. This is what it does. Here, here is the this facts. thing. These are yes. the facts. Exactly. Exactly. I heard it like that in my head. Right. Yeah. But it did manage to pull some context out. It may it wrote what is, at the end of the day, a coherent story. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like uh, a pile of gibberish. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I guess I'm still not worried about the machines taking my job. Um, but then again, you know, I think as we've shown this week, it's not an easy thing for a machine to do is yeah. you know kind of put context around these things. Right. It was kind of scary. Good how like coherent it was. Though. Yeah. I, I looked like, at the post. Mm-hmm. I read the story and was like. Okay, like this isn't a great story, yeah. but like, hey, Toby Golby, like, okay, like I, you're not awful at this. I also thought it was written before I knew it was written by a bot. I thought it was written by our database editor, Chris Nadas, because that's kind of some of the posts she does. And I was like, oh yeah, this totally, this is totally. Yeah, do, we, do we have a disclaimer in that post saying this was in fact <laughs> written by Wordsmith? Yes, Smith? yes, we do. Okay, well, I glossed over that part. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I missed it. Oh. Um, Toby, yeah, yeah. maybe Give we are we are almost out of time, unfortunately. Yeah. But I do want to ask one more question. Uh, I have a whole bunch of things that I'd love to address that we just simply don't have time. Um, 
but I guess what one of these the questions that this brought up for me, uh, this whole experiment with teaching it to write, is you know, did that neural network or did WordSmith create this post? Did it write the post? Or did it simply generate the story? And is there like an important distinction between those two things? There is an important distinction. It generated, generated. the post. Aaron poked it sort of along the way to get it. He, like he wrote the first sentence. Like he, he gave it sort of a seed to work with. And then I think, and I'll have to like double check in the story, but it's, he does kind of guide it along. Like there are a couple places where I think he sort of intervenes and makes it slightly more readable in certain ways by, by interacting with Wordsmith directly, uh, which to me just feels like, like this is this is a thing that anyone could do. Like it it just took some words and put them in a framework that sort of makes sense. Is that creation? No. And I think what it like the job that we journalists have to do is sort of write stories that these things can't. But even if like even with that said, like the stories that I write and the stories that you all write and the stories that we like to read on Engadget are the ones that have nuance and context and soul. Yeah. And unless you can convince or teach, I don't know, wordsmith or something like How to it, have an opinion. How to have an opinion and like f- effing stick to it. You yeah. know, like you will never ever get an AI to write a story about the backspace key that will be as fiery or as fun to read as what you just did 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I will take that as a, as a compliment. Uh, Dana, any last thoughts? Um, no, not for me. No? All right. Uh, Sherlyn? I wish I were intelligent enough to be to be a creator of AI. That's all my last thoughts are. Yeah. We, we are, uh, unfortunately, probably all at this table, not nearly as smart as any of the people who are doing this work. And I think, you know... But if I, anyone could do it, they could. Yeah. It's, it's super fascinating. But honestly, I, at times, barely understand it myself. Yeah. But you know what? Here's another difference between us and AI. Like, we'll always want to figure it out. True. They'll stop. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um... And now for an awesome transition. The other thing I do want to figure out is I want to figure out what you guys want. Uh, please tell us, send us feedback, leave comments, hit us up on Twitter at Engadget, email us at podcast at Engadget, um, or hit us up individually on Twitter. Uh, Chris, where can the fine viewers and listeners find you? Twitter.com slash Chris Velasco, V is in Victor, E L A Z is in Zebra C O. Dana? Uh, oh, and Twitter? Yeah, where can our, where can our find uh, readers and viewers and. It is my full name, Dana Wolman. Um, Dana Wolfman. Dana Wolman. Um, <laughs> stay out of my mentions unless you are nice. Thank you. Sherlyn, <laughs> like uh, where can they, they reach you? At Sherlyn Low, or just go to one of their Twitters and find me. <laughs> just go to one of theirs and just look in the, yeah, look in the people I follow. I'm, I'm the always followers. fighting with her, so you can just find her via. Yeah, me. we're always fighting. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Terrence O'Brien. That's lots of E's, no A's. Um, please join us next week. Thank you for watching. But before we go, I want to leave you with the comment of the week, which comes from E. Clinton about price or death to this article. Death to you. Uh, uh, uh.